welcome back to the LMS show. Give yourselves a give yourself a big hand. Now this, this young lady told me, she said, you know, I want to come on your show. Can you tell me that? Okay, we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. You say we'll read this and I'm gonna give a big uh, shout out here. Audrey D. Washington, founder CEO of Fairness, Fair Fairness, the financial coaching, is a, is a finance coach and educator. She is passionate about helping her clients achieve their financial goals and dreams and, and, and to be financially fit. She is a certified homeowner consult, consult counselor, house buyer uh, educator, and foreclosure uh, counselor. Mm -hmm. She has a master's degree in leadership and strategy management manager from Manhattanville College and a bachelor's in, fine, in, in economics from Montclair State University. She's an adjunct professor teaching personal financial management. That's what you're really teaching the colleges, you're teaching the lower grades too. Where so people be spending their money. Audrey is a life member of the National Council of Negro Women. Oh, good organization. I, love organization. I, love that. I remember I helped Miss Hike bring some stuff, you know, bring the, the um, Cameras and said, you know, she was, you know, she was on a trip, you know, came back from trip. She enjoyed baking, reading, traveling, and spending time with family and relaxing on the beach. Ladies and gentlemen, without no further ado, and the photograph is by so one of your relatives, right? Let's give it up for Audrey D. Washington. Give it up for us, Audrey. But that's kind of weak because this lady gonna talk about how to keep your money in your pocket. I need to spend, need to spend, need to spend, need to spend wisely. Yes. Ms. Washington, how are you doing? I am wonderful, Mr. Matthews. Thank you for having me, and I'm just happy to be on your show and here at Sisters Bookstore again. Yes, yes, yes. Transform your money mindset. What's this book about? What is the book about? Well, the um, concept of the book was that um, I had a career helping people buy their first home. Oh, so that's when okay. I started oh, 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 uh, my, financial, dream. my financial coaching. And one of the things that I realized was that we were giving the people the technical information, <clears throat> excuse me, and some were moving forward to buy the house and some weren't. And they weren't the ones that weren't weren't making any progress, right? So they were still kind of at the same place that they were. And so I started to realize that the technical information is important, but you also have to help people to change their thinking, or what I like to call money mindset, so that they can then achieve their financial goals. So that's really what the concept of the book is about, and the book walks you through like 10 chapters of information to try to help you to shift your thinking so that you can move forward. Like I said, initially, um, I work with people who are buying their first home, but this is about whatever financial goal you have, how you can move yourself forward, but you do need to change your thinking in order to do that. That's important, right? Yeah, you have to change your thinking. Um, you know, it's um, one of the things I talk about in the book, and, and I think this is something that athletes really get, right? So athletes understand that um, a lot of it is your mind that's going to help to push you to the next level, right? So many people have good athletic abilities, but what I say in the book, the ones that actually shift to have exceptional athletic careers are the ones that actually change their thinking in addition to um, their training. So. That's something that you know I talk about in the book as well. You know, I was thumbing through, looking through this book. Uh -huh. What a book! 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 They start from the home training stuff. Yes. What was you, how your parents were with money? Well, you know, I think um, you know I talk about um, the first chapter of the book talks about childhood money story, and we all have one. So. You know, what happens in your childhood around many things, but including money, kind of sets the tone for where you'll be as an adult. And so in my home, one of the things I talk about is, you know, my, you know, I had my mom and dad in the home, and we had a house, and had two cars, but for some reason, I still felt in all of that, even though I never saw, you know, every, bills were paid and things yeah, like that, I remember yeah, yeah, my yeah. dad sitting down and pulling out the checkbook and writing out the bills and yeah. things like that. 
Um, but for some reason, I still thought that money wasn't, you know, in, I didn't think we had a lot of money. And so because of that, it really kind of made me not ask for things that I wanted growing up. And still, even as an adult, it's hard for me to navigate. Like, I'll, you know, make sure my bills are paid and things like that. But when it comes to, like, just things that I want, I kind of hesitate on that. And you really need to balance it. Well, that, that's, that's, that's true, you know, because, um, you know, you all right when it comes around, you know, you do for everybody else without learning life. But when it comes around to yourself, sometimes, well, I don't want to use this expression, you be kind of stingy with yourself. That's true. That's very true. You know, yeah. They stand here and say, they say, well, you should get this, you know, and then I say, well, how about all the time, you know, like, like, you know, you don't want to bring up saying, well, you know, you know, when you were in a jam, you need a couple of bucks. <laughs> you ain't talk about it then, right? Right, yeah. So you definitely do need to have a balance in, in how you spend your money. So that's one of the things that the book does talk about. And I think the next thing, um, the biggest thing that I also talk about, one of the chapters is dedicated to my great grandmother. Um, her name was Grace Sumter. Yes, interesting lady. Yeah, talk yes. about, tell us about. And it. so, um, one of the things that was about my great grandmother, she had this saying: "If you make a dollar, save a dime." Right. So she had that concept. And so my grandmother um, had an interesting story. She went to school, maybe. I think first or second grade. Then she got sick and never went back to school. So really the only thing she could do was write her name. She couldn't read, she couldn't uh, write anything beyond um, you know, her signature. But she had that concept and she actually always had money. She, <laughs> right? oh, okay. she never made a lot of money. Um, she was um, from St. Helena Island, South Carolina. and. Um, she, you know, never made a lot of money. She worked, you know, um, at the time they, um, you know, the shrimping industry was big down there. Yeah, yeah. She came up to Connecticut, did a lot of domestic work. So she never made a lot of money, but she understood the concept of saving. And I think I that's... Think saving saving is, is, is important, right? Right. That's like I'm not actually, talking about that hoarding money, but saving. Saving is a huge foundation. If you can get that as a foundation, and that's one of the things I talk to my students about as well, Get that as a foundation. And sometimes people hesitate to save because they feel like I have to save big numbers, right? I have to save $100, $200. But really, it's the consistent habit of it, but save something, right? So that's really what you want to emphasize. And that's a strong financial foundation. If you can get that early, you'll actually be on your way. You know, even like a penny, you know, some, you know, you, you, sometimes some people bend over and pick a penny, but you say, oh, just a penny. But you know, you get another penny, and another, you know, this stuff's like it's, it's like exactly. a steamroller stuff. You know, like I got, you know, like like sometimes you have coins, and well, some of the bank, one 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 no bank doesn't do it anymore. But um, they, you know, you um, it adds up. Right, it definitely adds up. And I think um, you know, if you think about going back to your youth, many people had this concept of the piggy bank. Right? Yeah. And so people did kind of understand at least that basic foundation. So, you know, if somebody gave you money, they would say, you know, put that in your bank, put that in your bank. So there was that concept of it, but somewhere along the line, we kind of lost that. And so we're not saving as much. You know, I remember when I was going to school, they used to have the, the bank at that time work with the school, yes. and they used to have a savings bank thing. And used to put money, you know, put, you know, every week or something, you know, like right. they don't want to it. It sure adds up after a while. It does, yeah. And I think there are some, you know, some school districts and some cities that are starting that concept where they're actually partnering banks mm -hmm. with like kindergartners to really yeah, have yeah. the concept of when they get when they graduate and get ready to go to college, they have something safe. So yeah, definitely if we can come back to that and start young. Um, I think sometimes with children, um, you know, parents typically want to give kids more their kids more than what they have right yeah, yeah. and so i think sometimes there's a disconnect though that you still have to teach them about you know how to save sometimes you don't need to spend anything you know so like i tell um you know when i do talks i say you know when you have a child you have a conversation before they leave the house okay you got two dollars to spend right so sometimes they'll spend two dollars Sometimes they shouldn't spend anything. So just like adults, every time we go out, we don't need to spend money. No, that, that, that's right? true. That's so true. you want to start to keep them in that habit. Yeah, because I remember I was working. I just go to work. Now sometimes I said, "Well, maybe pay for me to go to work because 
I, if I took a day off from work, I'd be spending money out the street like 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 there's sure. no tomorrow. Sure. You know, like, like you know, you know, mm-hmm. running up and down the street, over down the street. So if I was on the plantation, I didn't have to spend that much money. I mean, they, they 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 got me there. Right. Kind of like put some structure into that, yeah. Um, and I think, <clears throat> I guess the other thing that I also talk about in the book, and it's actually towards the end, but it's really important. Um, and before I shift to that, let me also say one of the things that you want to think about with your money is financial legacy. What is your financial legacy going to be? And you want to think out. You know, your children, even your grandchildren, or even if you don't have children of your own, you think about children that are in, you know, your circle. And we have to think about financial legacy. If we just, you know, keep enough for ourselves and we don't think about how we can, you know, give, leave something to the next generation or generations, we have to start to think about that in a bigger way. So one of the things that I talk about um, in terms of financial legacy, I know in my family, We've had a family scholarship fund for the last 20 years. Oh, okay. And so we actually this year we celebrated our 20th year, and so we give out scholarships, um, you know, twice a year to the youth in our family. So that's like something that a family can pull together. So you want to think about as a family what your financial legacy is, and as well individually what your financial legacy is. That's so cool. Also, too, um, maybe we mentioned on another show. Um, I think the most important thing too is insurance. Right. Because, you know, insurance. don't give me funds and all that kind of stuff. But people say, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, <laughs> what, 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 what were you doing before? What were you doing before? Right. Well, it's all a part, part of, you know, your financial plan. <laughs> and then the last thing I would say, um, and the book talks about it, is what I call share the knowledge. And I'm big on oh, sharing the knowledge. Oh, people keep it. They, they keep yes. They sue themselves. Yes. They don't want to share the knowledge. You have to share the knowledge. And I think with money and finance, it can be a, a sticky subject, right? Kind of right up there with um, politics and religion. Yes. Um, people yeah. kind of put it in that category. So because of that, we operate in a space of not enough information or the wrong information. Yes. And so we have to start to make money and finance part of our social conversation. So with our family and friends, we have to figure out ways where we can share the information. So if you get information, share it with someone. So the, this kind of forum is great because we're sharing information about money and finance. And we have to do that more um, with our children, even as adults, and sometimes with adults, um, you know, we make some assumptions that people know have the information, um, or we're embarrassed to say we don't. We have to start to make it, just like we talk about the, you know, restaurant where we ate some good food, yeah. we got to start talking about money and finance. I, I think that's, I think that's, that's you know, what um, we're doing with LMS, we're going to uh, be talking a little bit more about that. I think it's important, you know, also maybe I can hook on these financials, but then again, these financials make sense too because you don't want to be left out there. And also, too, I remember they had this young guy, well, I won't name the sneaker company, because they already had somebody come be advertise a, a sneaker company. That's another story, so. But um, they were saying, these kids, they were teenagers, they said, well, they said oh, jo- Johnny, you got, you know, uh, you know, look, we got these fancy sneakers. And he said, yeah, well, I'm glad to keep getting those sneakers because I got a share in that company. <laughs> that means, you know, we, we have to learn, you know, pay people that we patronize, you know, these companies and, you know, these places. You pay, I think you got to learn how to buy a share. Just one share, that's all. You don't need, you don't need a whole bunch of shares. People say, ah, well, one share don't mean nothing. It make a big difference. They had to vote on something. And you can sway it your, your way. And they know that somebody, can, you know, not just as, as a consumer. Right. Absolutely. You know, and that's you, you, a good way to start out with your children. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. you know, like they have a particular, you know, like you have a soft drink or, or, or a baby room, a fast food place or whatever, you yes. know, I, 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 I believe in that. Mm-hmm. Good way to get them started. And then also a mutual fund too, right? You can start, yeah. You can start with mutual yeah, fund. Yeah, we have a whole, whole bunch of companies in there, right? Right, yeah. So you can do that. Um, I don't actually do investment 
I don't do no, 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 no. But um, yeah, mutual funds are a good way to start. Um, even honestly, simple. Um, you know, the old school savings bonds. Um, my parents used to do that with my nephews' birthday, Christmas. They got a savings bond. They now, still got savings bonds. They still, still out have there. savings bonds. Um, and it's funny when they were young, getting the savings bond, they kind of just tossed it aside. So my mom would always put let's say five dollars in the cart and then the information about the bond yeah but when they got ready to go to college yeah they were happy about those savings bonds because they were able to use them to help you know with college but you know again they didn't understand it when they were young and yeah. what it meant but when they got older they realized that it had value and they were happy that my parents did that consistently so yes there's something to think about as well i would love to Love to thank you very much for coming back, coming, for coming on the Anime me. Show, yes. and also too, we will, you know, you know, God willing, in, in, in the near future, we will be invited, be invited back. Okay. Because I want you, you know, we want to ask you. I think it's important about you know, you know, some of my relatives, my son was a sea son. They said, "Oh, well, you worship money, and this, and they worshiping money. Yeah, when you when you when you're broke, you know what? Need some money to come to me." <laughs> <laughs> You worship it. It's not worship it. It's nice. You know, the lack of it is, 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 is the root of all evil. And also, too, if you don't, if you can have all the money in the world, but you, if you don't have, a, if you don't budget your money, it's, oh, it's, it's never a money problem. It's a budget problem. Absolutely. On, on that note, I would like to thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. What does that mean again, everybody? Transform your money mindset. And, and, and by who? Financial fitness. And, and by who? Audrey Washington, Fiercely Financial Coach. And you teach us in, in, in the schools too, right? Um, yeah, the yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some of the colleges should be having that, you know, you know, how, how to budget your money and everything. Well, more of them are going to that, and even some of the lower grades. Are yeah, well, I think that's the important so Finance, yes. Give it up for Audrey D. Washington. And we'll see you in the warm elementary. And we'll be back. And welcome to the LMS show. Oh my goodness, give yourselves a big hand. We're up here at Sisters Bookstore. Um, You know, going back some years, I always remember a particular. But first of all, let's be me, be Otis. Give, give Otis Walls a big hand, everybody. Nineteen sixty-three, Otis. That was a year, right? Yes. You know, we had um, unfortunately the loss of John F. Kennedy. And the ethic of 63, I always remember that, though, you know. You know. Yeah, I was working downtown, uh, Belfield Street, yeah. when it happened, in a close, a close company yeah. at the time when it happened. Yeah. 1963? Yes. Also to 63, we had some hit records on the air, too, yeah. making the airways. Mm. Just One Look by Doris Troy. That's all it took. One, just one look. I believe the '63 too was another Saturday night by Sam Cooke, right? Yeah. And, 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 and hey, hey, Paula, I wanna marry you. Hey, hey, hey Paula, Paula, I wanna marry you. Oh, hey, hey, Paula, <laughs> what else do? I waited so long to tell. You don't make songs like that. I don't wanna get into that. <laughs> and, 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 and daily grace, but we got to let you do west. That's why I'm leaving it up to you. <laughs> you decide what you're going to do. <laughs> but do you want my love? Or are we through? We have to record that. Uh oh. And, 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 and then we had, and, 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 and we had, the, we had one of my favorite songs in '63. Oh, wow. I bought that record on the well, the Dotley. That record, I wore that record out. Sugar Shack. There's a crazy little shack 
We on the track. Everybody calls it the sugar shack. Well, just a coffee house is made out of wood. Espresso coffee tastes mighty good. That's not the reason why I got to go up to that sugar shack. The reason why he went up to because why? Order because there was a cute little girlie. She's working there. They don't make them like that. You remember the that's words and that. That's going back over 50 years. You have the songs yeah. like the like Major Lash, the Monkey Yeah, time. Monkey Time, yeah, Monkey yeah. Time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you ready? I saw him on Dick Clark doing that. Are you ready? He took me. Yeah. And, and, and he said the Major, and Dick Clark said, that's your real name? He said, yeah, that's his yeah, real you name. You know, one of the favorite songs that I always like is what we had. Beautiful Hum. Yeah. yeah. How they will come. Ruby and Romantics. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Love them. Oh. <laughs> that was the sound. And, 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 and I'm going to take away the professor yes. take. How we get to this with some of the music today. Some of the music is nice. Some of the songs I hear on the radio, you can't buy, you can't go to a local record store. You got to download it now. Ain't that something? Yeah, I'm going to download it. Yeah, download all that stuff. But. One of my favorites of 1963. I still sing the song today. In fact, I was well I'm taking a bath and I was singing the song. <laughs> uh, Sally Go Round the Roses. Tell us about Louise. How did you meet Louise? Well, I met Louise quite a bit to a young man I used to sing with the Donald. We used to have a group called Valentine's in okay. 1965. Okay. And um, he started recording right out of a uh, East New York. Okay. And then uh, I met Louise right after that to Donald. Okay. Donald and I have been singing together okay. in 1965, you know. So we had, and everybody said they used to get us mixed up with the Valentines. Mm -hmm. But the Valentines came out early during that time. Yeah. And, then, and when I met her, and she had this golden voice, and she said, Oh, I made this record back in 1954. I said, Ah, that's, that's like rocking chairs. Yeah. And that's it, Louise, and, and she, and she then, oh, then you say, oh yeah, and I didn't know that she was doing, and then she told me, well, you know, I was in uh, the, the other record I made, uh, too, so I go around the road. Uh, yeah, How'd you, when the first time you heard that song, what was your reaction to that song? That's remind me of them girls on the, down there on the playground, they'd be, they'd be go, playing Sally go around the road, I'd be watching her. And then, with the, like, those can slip, yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember those, those dresses? The patent leather. Yeah, the, yeah, the, okay. The socks roll down. Yeah. Roses don't oh. tell your secret, right? That's right. <laughs> right. Sally, yeah. don't you go, don't you go downtown. Yeah. Sally, don't you go, don't you go downtown. Saddest thing in the whole wide world. What, Cassandra? To see your baby with another girl, right? <laughs> you know, I've seen this Cassandra tell them about it. See your baby with another girl. <laughs> girl. <laughs> Anyone old and old. But you know, that was a big hit. It was a big oh, yeah. hit. It went as far as number two on the charts in the country. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And look at all the girl groups were out there at that time too. I mean, they were that record, you know. The Dixie Cups. The Dixie yeah. Cups, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were really, I mean, they were, you wow. know, they were kicking butt out there. <laughs> and the Marvelettes. And the Marvelettes about that time yes. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. In, 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 in one moment, we're going to introduce to you the young lady who made that hit record, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, how many members was in the group of these? Could you say that? It was uh, four girls and the pianist was Rex, a boy. And that's what, uh, oh, that was, there was a piano and that was it? Yeah. Oh, you, you mean in, in um... The song, Sally Go Around Rosa. Oh, no, it was just three of us. Three that, girls. That's it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But it had a nice little sound though. Oh yeah, it had the style of his own. It was nothing like it. In a few minutes, us men are going to depart from here, and the ladies are going to take over. And with with Ty Brown's going to interview Louise from the Jaylets and take it down. Sally go round the roses. Okay, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah.